For a long time, Carowinds Fury 325 had been one of my highest ranked bucket list coasters. I finally got the chance to experience it for myself in early June of 2019. How does it really stack up though? Stay tuned and find out what I think about Fury 325. Fury starts with this massive lift hill, the tallest lift hill in the world as a matter of fact, standing 325 feet tall. As you crest the top here, you get some incredible views of the park before you plummet down this absolutely insane 320 foot drop angled at 81 degrees. This drop provides the first of many great moments of airtime on the ride as you get thrown out of your seat, especially if you're sitting in the back. You then rise up into this huge bank turnaround which is really intense. I found myself graying out a bit at the top of this turnaround. Next is a pretty graceful high speed bank turn twisting to the right, then another high speed bank turn twisting you to the left before rising up into one of the ride's signature elements, the very unique treble clef. And here you experience great sideways airtime at the top before flying under the park's entrance at astonishing speed. And this is called the hive dive. Next is a big twisting bank turn to the left. Then you twist into a shallow descent to the ground, then up and over the third great airtime moment of the ride, which is a large camelback hill. This hill is trimmed, and you definitely feel that, but it doesn't take away from the ride too much, as you get some great flowjector going over this hill. After this, you turn to the right and traverse the ride's massive helix, which is definitely the weakest part of the ride, but not really bad by any means. Although it just feels like you kind of meander through this element, it thankfully doesn't really take away from the ride either, as you gain momentum after this to end the ride very nicely. The ride's finale consists of two great small ejector airtime hills which do provide some great airtime in any seat, and if you are sitting in the front, you will even get a decent pop of airtime going up into the final bricks here. The layout of Fury is great. It has a good variety of elements thrown into its 6,602 feet of track. These range from low to the ground twists and turns which focus on speed, to great moments of ejector airtime. Add to this some unique elements, such as the treble clef and the hive dive, which provide unique combinations of forces and unique interactions, and Fury has a good mix of different types of elements to work with, especially when compared to some of the other gigas. One thing I want to discuss that could potentially hold this ride back for some is the wide helix directly after the large trimmed camelback hill. Looking at how the structure is built, I can understand why the helix is designed this way, as it has to weave around the large A-frame supports of the lift hill, which are right in the middle of where the helix is, but the ride just kind of meanders through the helix, making it feel like filler a bit. It would have been nice if this could have maybe been designed to travel in a different direction to make it a bit tighter, or maybe throw in a different type of element altogether. However, this is a minor nitpick, and this helix really doesn't take away from how great this ride is, in my opinion. Fury is also a very long ride, and one of the longest in the world in terms of track length at 6,602 feet. The ride time is about 60 seconds from drop to break, which is really good for a coaster traveling at 95 miles per hour. Despite being very long, the pacing, apart from the helix, is very good up until the end, as the train is still going pretty fast over the last two airtime hills. Fury 325 opened in 2015 and was designed by Bolliger and Mabillard. It is their second giga coaster after Leviathan at Canada's Wonderland. Being such a new B&M ride, Fury is very smooth. No type of rattle that I noticed, though slight rattles don't really make a difference to me anyway. Something else I really wanted to make note of is the operations here. The Fury crew did an amazing job the whole time I was at Carowinds. Dispatches were typically about 45 to 60 seconds with three trains. The crew were doing everything they could to safely load guests in the quickest amount of time in order to keep the line moving. As a result, Fury never had much of a line while I was at the park. Out of the 10 rides I got, the longest I waited for Fury was maybe 10 minutes, and all of my other rides were station waits or walk-ons. Outstanding job, Fury crew. Fury 325 is a huge, exhilarating, intense ride filled with many great airtime moments and high-speed turns. It is truly a wonder to look at and a very photogenic ride as you are entering the park. A very phenomenal looking front gate coaster with a brilliant color scheme for sure. It is so awesome that Cedar Fair has seen the potential in Carowinds to invest heavily in the park and decided to pump so much money into the park for something as great as this. 
Many coaster enthusiasts consider Fury to be among the very top roller coasters in the world, and I would have to be inclined to agree. It ranks very highly in my personal top 5, and as such, I believe Fury 325 at Carowinds deserves none other than a perfect score of 10 out of 10. If you are a roller coaster enthusiast, this is something you should definitely experience at some point. If you enjoyed this review, be sure to like, comment your thoughts on Fury 325, and subscribe to my channel for much more exciting content coming in the near future discussing all things roller coaster and amusement park related. Also, like my page Coaster Daddy on Facebook, and follow me at Coaster Daddy Official on Instagram. This is Coaster Daddy. Thank you guys again so much for watching. Bye.